we were experiencing some technical difficulties because I was told by my advisor that, and I quote, my face looks too fat. <laughs> no. um, don't know if it's the lighting, guys. I'm 176.4 pounds, but I got some major fatness. Oh, I see. I see. No, it's better. Face. Oh, it's better. But I do think it's the sweater. Blame the lighting. Were no, you the same person I look better? I would say in person you look better. You, you're definitely Psalm 5 in person, Omar. <laughs> For real guys, what's cracking? Omar Esau Fair, delayed intro. I want to talk today how there's essentially no perfect diet. And you might be asking yourself, what's a fat guy like you got to offer when it comes to diet advice? Well, a whole lot actually. Uh, first, what I want to do, I want to give a huge shout out to uh, my boy, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, always dropping the knowledge. Uh, he had a great post today, essentially talking about the idea behind this video, there's no perfect diet. I also want you guys, just quickly in the comment section below, because I'm back to bringing on more experts. I got my boy Alberto Nunez. I'm actually getting uh, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld on, uh, Eric Helms, uh, Brett Contreras, a lot of guys. But I want you to post your questions below in the comment section for Dr. Brad Schoenfeld when it comes to building muscle, weight loss, anything. He is an expert in the field, and we're going to do an interview. Moving forward now, the idea behind uh, this video, the topic, that there's no ideal diet. I get pissed, I fucking hate when uh, what happens is that people on the Instagrams, they try and sell diet plans and they give these specific ratios. And I just want to talk a little bit about this today because this does rustle my jimmy. Someone asked, what rustles your jimmy's on And I said, besides, you know, running out of hair ties, this is numero dos. Is that, is that correct? Uh, dos. Close enough. <clears throat> um, but what I mean is that different... Every individual is uh, unique and they'll respond differently to ratios between carbohydrates and fats. It's generally accepted that you should be having, you know, roughly it does depend. And I know some people like uh, Menno recommend less than one gram per pound of body weight or lean body weight. That's just a rough ballpark right there. But most people agree somewhere around there. So you got your protein, a one gram per pound of lean body weight or per pound of body weight if you're not excessively overweight as your first uh, metric or macro that you set. And then from there you adjust between your carbohydrates and fats. Uh, those that are typically maybe a little bit more overweight or have more difficulty losing weight, their carbohydrate intake will be a little bit lower, their fat intake will be a little bit higher. But what you'll see with all these people is that the problem is that they use inductive logic. What worked for them or what they see elite people, what works for them, or they're probably, you know, they just have a better sensitivity. They respond better to carbohydrates. They give these diet plans that either, you know, when it comes to the classic bro bodybuilding style, where it's like, you know, one gram or maybe thereabouts per pound of body weight for protein, but the carbs are way too high. Their body can't handle it and the fats are super, super low. And there's a lot of danger to this. That's why I make, and there's a, a you know, there's some magic behind the scenes where there are certain bad things that can happen. You drop your fats too low, it can be bad for your hormones, uh, you can lower your energy, carbohydrates, then you simply put can't lose as much weight as if you had a more balanced approach. So when we talk overall about fat intake, we talk about carbohydrate intake. What it really boils down to is over time, I do believe that individuals can kind of handle more carbohydrates as they build more muscles, as they do more exercise. Essentially, as you do more work because uh, you know, do more work, expends more calories. You can afford to consume more carbohydrates. If you follow the diet, you are going to lose weight. So it doesn't really matter what happens. It doesn't matter quite the exact ratio unless you want to get competition ready, which I might be ill-informed of my audience. I don't think that's most people out there. They just want to look good, feel good, be aesthetic, be strong, be able to do something with their body. So I think compliance is really important. So that means uh, what you eat, we talk about flexible dieting, making sure that, of course, you try and focus on nutrient-dense food. People underestimate estimate the importance of micronutrients. I don't want any bros out there pissing orange because they're just eating pop tarts and having whey protons. Okay, that's that's the opposite end of the spectrum. But the same idea I talked about uh, intermittent fasting. Actually, Eric Helms had a great video on this channel, essentially saying that it's down to personal preference. There's nothing inherently magical, let's say, about intermittent fasting that has uh, greater benefits than a, a traditional diet or eating you know, spaced out meals or three to four meals per day. But if you find that it curbs your appetite or allows you to comply better to your diet, more power to you. Actually, I just want to add something else because this reminds me of when I was a personal trainer back in the day at Extreme Fitness and there was two overweight bros. Uh, they were each at least 70 to 80 pounds more overweight than their ideal or healthy body fat percentage uh, would be. And so they were fiercely, and I mean fiercely debating between high intensity interval training for cardio and low intensity steady state cardio. And at the end of the day, they just had to get started and comply to what would allow them to lose weight. So compliance is number one. 
Then from there, you want to take a look at your caloric total. That's your second factor. You want to look at your protein intake. Then the ratio between those two uh, fats and carbohydrates, as I said before, a good starting point is like half a gram per pound of body weight of fat, and then the remainder of your calories will be carbohydrates. That's a good starting point, but you need to manipulate that over time. And for those people that are just on those poverty macros, I can say as someone that before used to lose weight when I was 140, 50 pounds on only like, you know, 1600 calories is what I'd be eating, very low carbohydrates. Over time, your body actually can adapt, especially when we talk about that concept of uh, Dr. John Baretti or G Flux, just essentially doing more work, you can afford to eat more calories in general, then you have more room to play with. So it's all about compliance. If you find that you want to eat more calories, then you can move around a little bit more, expend more calories in order to allow yourself to eat just a little bit more to be satisfied. So everyone has a different amount, everybody has a different ratio, whatever or however you comply, whether it's three meals a day, five meals a day, or intermittent fasting, whatever gets you to lose the weight and reach your goal, as I said back in the day. It's time for us to reach our goals! Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Told you I could do it. I'm feeling lightheaded. This did rustle my jimmies a little bit, seeing this, seeing once again on Instagram. Instagram is kind of a cesspool of shit, always, where people are trying to, you know, they use their image, like, man, I'm in fucking great shape. Eat tilapia and broccoli and brown rice every day and you'll get shredded. And it just doesn't work that way. So when I see stuff like that, I think it's extra important. It's even more important to try and spread that good word. So that is the video, guys. You made it all the way to the end of the video. What hell are you waiting for like the damn video and make sure to leave a comment below what you want to see from my interview with dr. Brad Schoenfeld because he could definitely delve into more advanced topics if you guys want to talk about uh, satellite cells if you want to talk about uh, different aspects of uh, hypertrophy how it works or what is ideal when we talk about different exercises or different body parts just go nuts go ape shit post in the comment section below and I'll be seeing all you guys my rascals in that next video peace Eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, eat your fucking vegetables.